Hello viewers, thank you for clicking on this video. In this video, Pastor Mesa Otabo talks about poverty and wealth and teaches us how to break the cycle of poverty in our lives. Please watch this video till the end in order to understand the full message and also don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. I'm going to talk about wealth and poverty. Wealth and poverty. Amen. I don't know why you are excited about it, whether it's the poverty side or the wealth one. <laughs> wealth and poverty are very powerful forces. They are forces that rule the world. The world is ruled by these two forces, wealth and poverty. And they drive everything that happens in the world. Poverty is a very powerful force. People may not see it, but a lot of people's profession is based on poverty. Without poverty, they will have no job. For those people, it is important that poverty continues. A lot of the work the United Nations does is based on poverty. And for the UN to survive, people must be poor. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, but the destruction of the poor is their poverty. It's a very powerful phrase. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, but the destruction of the poor is their poverty. So that clearly tells you that poverty is a destroyer. It is that which destroys the poor. And it beats my imagination why anybody will embrace a destroyer as a friend. Or anybody will preach that a destroyer is good for you. Because the destruction of the poor man has. <laughs> Wealth does not include things like cars or household items like televisions, fridges, furniture. Because they are not readily converted into cash. And lose value with time. So, when you go to buy a brand new car, from the day, the moment you drive the car from the lot out, it loses about 20% of its value. Just by driving it out. That, that means that if you bought a car, drove it out, returned it the next day, you will be, the price of your car will be discounted. So the car hasn't given you money. It has actually cost you money. It's interesting that people see possessions of things like cars as manifestation of wealth. So sometimes when you see people showing off their wealth and they say, look at my cars. And they show you all kinds of cars they have as, as a sign of wealth. Wealth is not seen in cars because cars do not appreciate in value all things being equal. Except it's an antique car or one of a kind car. Apart from that, your car is an expense to you. To keep it alive, you have to feed it.
I mean, wealth in a larger sense includes things like the blessing of God, the peace of God, health, happy marriage, family life. I know all of that is wealth, but that's not what I'm talking about. So when I'm talking about wealth, I'm talking about having abundance of valuable possessions. Wealth defends the rich. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12 says, money is a defense. Those who have money use it to defend themselves, to secure their power and their position. When you have no money, you have no defense. It's, it's just amazing what can happen to people when they have no money. Money is a very powerful force for defense. It will defend your dignity. And when you don't have it, you may lose your dignity. Never ever in your lifetime praise poverty never so what is poverty poverty is a lack of material resources or money poverty can either be absolute or relative absolute poverty is when you don't have enough to take care of basic needs of life. Relative poverty is when you have met basic necessities but wish for better. So relative poverty is when you want something but you can't buy it. When you want something you can't buy it, you are relatively poor. In other words, you go to a shop, you see a shoe. It will look good on your feet. You want to buy it. Everything in you says, this shoe is yours. But you look at it, you turn the backside of the under of the shoe, you see the price, and you quietly <laughs> put it back. That is called relative poverty. So relative poverty is when you desire something which is good for you and it may not be something extraordinary but it's good maybe a, you want a second pair of shoes you want a better trouser you want a better bed you want you know a better car but you cannot buy it <coughs> you are not absolutely poor but relatively poor in relation to that thing, you are poor. In this world, the wealthy are few, the poor are in multitudes. 65 people of the world's wealthiest people own half of the wealth of the world. That's serious. Africa's wealth, your continent and my continent, <laughs> at this point I think is about 3.5 trillion or thereabouts dollars. Three point five trillion dollars. That's a lot of money. The whole of Africa, South Africa to Egypt, Senegal to Somalia, Ghana included, Nigeria included, all of us, three point five trillion.
the wealth of four companies Apple computers Google alphabet we just crossed 1 trillion Amazon Facebook the one you've been using these four companies four companies are richer than our continent four companies most of them established in my life and for all of them established in my lifetime the oldest of those companies is Apple. It was set up in 1975. The year I met Pastor Ransford. <laughs> Four companies. Run the world. So in this world, wealth sets the agenda, poverty fulfills the agenda. There are people whose money determines who should govern a nation, but they need those without money to ensure that the agenda comes to pass. Those who have money are a few. The masses who have the vote have no money so those who have the money sets the agenda for who should be governing nations there are people whose money finances research but they need those without money to believe in the research so the people with money pay scientists to conduct research and tell us what is true and what is false so one day they are going to tell you that based on their scientific analysis and based on their research something you have believed in all your life is not true and something all of us know doesn't make sense is right and they will show you all the evidence last year there was a very major research that was done it included uh, 500,000 people that is 500,000 people were used as the sample for the research on whether people are born gay or they learn to be gay this is the largest such research with the largest sample base and the results came out that scientifically having analyzed 500,000 people half a million people there is no evidence that anybody is born gay have you heard about that why haven't you heard about it because somebody has determined what you should hear and what you should not hear if that evidence had come and said the people are born gay we will everybody cnn will broadcast it from morning to evening bbc will broadcast it morning to evening they will disturb everybody's ear with it but once the research goes another way they shut it down because the agenda of this world is not set by the poor it is set by the rich and whoever wants to make you powerless 
one of the most fundamental things they will do in your life is to make you not have money. The agendas of this world are set by the wealthy. One person sitting here somewhere can determine what a billion people should believe. You know, one of the things that amazed me, you know, when I look and study what happens in the world, you know, scientists are supposed to be objective. All of you who went to tech, who are scientists, you're supposed to be objective. You know, science, science is objective. Science is, and I said, well, if it's objective, why does it keep changing? One moment they said, egg is not good for you. Don't eat egg. The next moment, egg is good for you. Eat too. <laughs> One moment they say, uh, coffee is not good for you. Next moment, drink five cups is good for your health. One moment, don't eat chocolate. Next moment, eat chocolate. So if it is objective, how come the conclusions are changing? Because science does not rule the world. Money rules the scientist. <laughs> Believe you me, People who will tell you, we are objective. We, we, as far as we see the truth as it is, I'm telling you, they don't. They say it according to who is paying what they are saying. And that is one of the big challenges for us as Africans. Because people set the agenda for us and we follow. Since I became aware as an adult, I have seen African countries go under IMF programs, World Bank programs, structural adjustment, accelerated structural adjustment, economic recovery, HIPIC. I mean, we've gone through over and over and over and over and over and over, and I've never seen one African country come out of poverty in spite of all the monies that have been poured into our countries. So do you think if they wanted you to come out of poverty, they couldn't have done it? How can you give people billions of dollars and it doesn't change anything? Because the, the people giving you their money, it is in their interest that you remain poor. Money is very powerful. You may say, well, Pastor, money is powerful. Money led Delilah to deceive Samson. She wasn't a bad girl. <laughs> she wasn't a bad girl. She was a nice girl. Samson just fell in love with a nice, good girl called Delilah. If you read the passage, it tells you it is after he fell in love with her that she was weaponized with money. It wasn't as if they gave her money to say, go and tempt Samson. No, Samson fell in love with a nice, good girl called Delilah. But Delilah was a poor, nice, good girl. And the Philistines came to Sister Delilah and said, we can solve your university education problems. We can solve your mother's financial problems. We can solve your father's financial problems. 
all we want is ask this man one question and get the answer for us. How did they get a nice girl who has fallen in love with a nice, handsome, macho man to betray him? Money. Money secured the betrayal of Jesus. <laughs> we can bring the devil in, but whatever it is, it was money. <laughs> Judas went to the chief priest and says, how much will this information fetch me and they told him the price and the price was right and he betrayed Jesus you say pastor I will never do that you sure you will be amazed what money will make you do you will be amazed I'm telling you you you, you will be shocked yourself. That's why when, when after Judas did that, he went to kill himself. He was shocked. Me? Do that? He did it. Oh yeah, people have done things they never thought they have done. Christians have done things they never thought they, they would do. Married women have done stuff they never thought they would do. Money changed the story of the resurrection. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 to 15, the guards changed the story. The Bible says, while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders, they consulted together and gave a large sum of money to the soldiers saying, tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Do you know why it is difficult for us to preach the resurrection? It's so difficult. Nobody can believe Jesus rose from the dead. How can a man die? But the guards who were there saw it. The disciples saw it and said he had risen. The guards saw it and went to tell the chief priest he has risen. Believe you me, between the disciples and the guards, the one whose testimony was most authentic was the guard. Because he has no direct interest in the resurrection of Jesus. And if they had come to say, yes, we saw it, he rose from the dead, the resurrection would never have been a contested fact. But they saw it and they were incentivized to change the story. And now you and I have to spend ages learning Christian apologetics and learning hermeneutics and learning all these theories and trying to prove the resurrection of Jesus but the guys who saw it were giving money so if money was made to change the story of the resurrection Money has to be used to affirm the story of the resurrection. You can be as prayerful as you want. If you are denied money, your influence will be limited. But the church cannot become rich institutionally without its members individually becoming rich. 
Because the church is not a business. And the church does not generate wealth. It is the members who go to make money and because of their love for the work of God, give part of their money to the church. So if anybody is going to stop the church from making money, they are going to make the church feel bad teaching people how to make money so that their people will be great prayer warriors, mighty prayer warriors who know how to fast for 40 days but are abjectly poor. And so far as you maintain your extreme prayer posture, and combine it with your poverty, the world will love you. I'm telling you. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 13 to 17. This wisdom also I have seen under the sun, and it seemed great to me. In other words, this, this is great wisdom. There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it, besieged it, built great snares around it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no one remembered that same poor man. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Words of the wise, spoken quietly, should be heard rather than the shout of a ruler of fools. A poor wise man. Maybe in our time we will say, a poor anointed prayer warrior. <laughs> poor wise man. The Bible says he by his wisdom delivered the city. The poor prayer warrior who is on his knees praying for economic transformation in Ghana. Do you ever think if Ghana's economy transforms, they will go and look for that poor man to say, thank you for praying for Ghana's transformation. No. His prayer will be despised. In fact, there are people, when Ghana prospers, people say, these are the people we must get out of the system because they don't know how to do anything. All they do is pray, 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 and it amounts to nothing. And they have no idea it was this man's prayer that delivered the city and blessed the city. So far as you remain a poor, wise man, people would take your wisdom, they would take your prayer, they would take your anointing, but they, and use it to their benefit, but afterwards, there's no respect for you. This man saved a city, was not recognized. Because somebody would take credit for what you work for if you are poor. Do you know that most of the people the world credits as inventors of things are not the ones who invented them? Yeah. Most of the big names, this one invented electricity, this one invented telephone, they are not the ones who did it. The first man to get to Mount Everest is not the first man to get to Mount Everest. He was with a poor wise man. The poor wise man has been going to Mount Everest every time, but he's not in the history books. It's his village. He goes to Mount Everest every day. It's like uh, he was born. You, you know, you, you go to Mount Everest and come. But when you read the history books to ask who is the first man to get Mount Everest, they will mention somebody else's name. But there was a poor wise man. A shepherd who knows the way but never gets the credit. A lot of people who are credited with great inventions in the world bought the idea from poor wise men who developed the idea. 
but don't even understand patent and how to register. In fact, one particular person, whilst he was on his horse going to register, somebody had taken a train <laughs> to go and register his idea. He went to the patent and he said, I invented it. He said, well, it's already registered. Somebody came ahead of you and registered it. I'm telling you, poverty is, is a devil. It's a devil. I don't mind if you are poor, but don't praise it. Fight it. Hate it. Work against it. But don't accept it as your natural state. As Pastor Mensah Otabo has explained to us how to break the cycle of poverty, I believe you have been blessed just as I have been blessed. One key note I took from this message was to never praise poverty as poverty is a deadly disease. I believe you have been blessed as I said before. Please share your comments down in the comment section below and also do not forget to like this video subscribe to our channel and also follow Pastor Mensa Utabel's YouTube videos for more of videos such as this. Thank you.